Dr. Gottlieb. He is the former FDA commissioner, a current CNBC contributor. Dr. Gottlieb, it's good to see you again. Thanks. So here we are. We're on the eve of Georgia opening, and you tweeted out just a short time ago that you have a worsening epidemic now in the state of Georgia, and it may not peak until the first week in May. Right. If you look at the recent update to the IHME model, the closely watched model that's modeling um, the peak epidemics across the country and states and looking at healthcare care resource utilization, they now pushed out their projections on how severe the Georgia epidemic is going to be and also when it's going to peak. They're projecting that it would peak sometime in late April into early May. If you look at the confidence intervals around when when they show that epidemic peaking in terms of the number of deaths being reported on a daily basis, a number of hospitalizations. So Georgia actually has worsened. I mean, the data is showing that the epidemic is getting stretched out in that state already. There's a couple of other states that look worse in the latest update on the model. I think it's consistent with the data we're seeing, that model right now. And the model is probably getting more accurate in terms of gauging the current U.S. experience. And so I would put some stock in, in these projections that it's going to take a little longer for Georgia to, to peak and come down from their epidemic. Let's talk about a neighboring state, that being Florida. The senator there, Rick Scott, tonight saying that they're nowhere near close on having enough testing. Dr. Fauci apparently telling Time magazine the same. The president disagreeing with Dr. Fauci tonight, Dr. Gottlieb, at the news conference, saying that he is disagreeing with that, that he thinks we're doing great. What's the truth? Where are we on testing? Well, look, we're doing a good job building capacity, but we got a late start. And so because we only started really building this capacity in February, we're not where we need to be. Uh, we will be there, I think, in a couple of months. We're going to have a lot of testing capacity heading into the fall. We'll probably have the ability to test 3 million people a week, which I think is pretty robust capacity. But right now, as we reopen the country, our current ability is to test about a million people a week, which sounds like a lot, but spread over a diverse nation, a big nation, and in the throes of a, a declining epidemic, when you're still doing a lot of testing around the hospital, it doesn't leave a lot of excess capacity to be testing in the community. What you want is the capacity to test anyone who presents with any kind of signs or symptoms of coronavirus or anyone who might have been in contact with someone with coronavirus. You want to be testing very aggressively and widely in the community. We're not able to do that right now. If you look nationally at the positivity rate, how many people who get tested are actually positive when they get their test results back? It's about 20 percent. That figure should probably be below 5%. That would be a good indication that we're testing um, broadly enough if we're getting back fewer positive samples. So right now we're still getting back too many positive samples, really to give you comfort that we're testing broadly enough. How about this new study, Dr. Gottlieb, that suggests sunlight is effective in killing the virus and killing the virus very quickly? What do we know? Well, they talked about the president's press conference today, and I tweeted out an earlier, uh, earlier today a study that uh, was done in China where they looked at clusters, and we've talked about this on the show. They, they looked at clusters of infection where three or more people became infected from a single introduction, a single index case, and found that in only one case, and this was about 130 different cases, in only one case was the infection um, originating from uh, transmission that happened indoors, um, outdoors, excuse me. In the other cases, the transmission happened indoors, either on subways, on mass transit, or in the home. So what they found was that you were far less likely to transmit the infection to a group of people if, if people were clustered outside versus inside. And so that's consistent with what we know about this virus. Ultraviolet light does kill the virus. We believe that um, hot, humid weather makes droplet transmission less efficient. We know that from other viruses. So there should be less transmission outside versus inside. And so where that becomes important from a policy standpoint is if you're a governor or a mayor, you could start to think about moving certain activities that might take place inside, but now you have the advantage of being able to move them outside because the weather is warming. Having those activities restart outside rather than indoors. So you think of religious services or gym classes, things that would give people a sense of normalcy about their lives that you want to restart. But you don't want to crowd people into indoor settings. You might be able to do those more safely outside and perhaps introduce them a little earlier than you might have otherwise done.